Well, welcome back to Ask Premier Ed. The next uh, questions are about the budget, economy, and taxes. And here's the first question. Question from Twitter. What's the point of a fiscal update when projections change in the billions every couple of months? That is a very, very good question. And uh, we're, we're uh, legislated to report on a quarterly uh, period changes in our revenue stream and also in our expenditures. And it is a good uh, policy. There's nothing wrong with that. But that just uh, proves once again that the province of Alberta has the most volatile revenue stream in North America. It is resource-based and every dollar change in a unit of natural gas, a difference of 1.1 billion dollars in our budget, for every penny change in the Canadian dollar compared to the American dollar, uh, we'll see a change of 221 million. So these are just two of the contributing factors to the volatility of trying to forecast revenue uh, in over the next few months. With respect to the expenditure side, you'll find that the expenditure side is static. Uh, there were some uh, changes, of course, that we've had some issues, uh, catastrophic events, uh, some flooding that we had to support municipalities with, so there was an increase in the expenditure side there, and probably in the next fiscal period, we'll see an increase in expenditure side in health over the H1N1 flu vaccination program. But generally, expenditures are, are controlled uh, fairly tight from fiscal period to fiscal period, but there is a bit of a change in the revenue stream. And once again, this time, uh, companies were doing much better than we thought with respect to corporate tax. And we also saw an increase in personal income tax tells us that uh, more people are moving to the province of Alberta. And even though we have a higher unemployment rate, uh, there are more companies hiring and uh, more people paying uh, personal income tax to the province. Comment from YouTube. <clears throat> Alberta transferred over $17 billion to other provinces in 2008. Can we address our budgetary concerns by reducing that amount for a few years? This is uh, a question that refers to Alberta's contribution to Ottawa. And it is, uh, it's a formula that has about 33 different uh, components to it. And uh, originally what happened is we would take the highest uh, tax effort province and lowest and average the five. And that would give us an indication of uh, how much each province con contributed uh, net to Ottawa. Since then, that formula has been changed. And now it's an average of 10 provinces plus it includes 50% of natural resource revenue. So that has greatly increased the amount of money net that goes to Ottawa. The $17 billion uh, is, um, as, as uh, YouTube said, 08. The, the this latest statistic is $21.1 billion net contribution to Ottawa. And uh, so on a per capita basis, that would be $5,745 each. It is a system that has been put in place since Confederation. And that is why, uh, as the province of Alberta, as the government of Alberta, uh, we're, we're emphatic that we receive the dollars that, that are owed to Albertans in all of the transfer programs, whether it be through the social tax transfer or through the uh, Canada Health Transfer. And we are working with the federal government uh, on the Canada Health Transfer because we do receive less than other provinces and it's one point of uh, negotiation with the federal government. But uh, it is a considerable amount of money, and that is why uh, when we start talking about this whole issue of climate change and cap and trade and moving credits from one jurisdiction to another, we already have a huge wealth transfer program in place in this country, and I suggest to everyone that uh, we cannot afford another wealth transfer program like some provinces may be talking about. So we're going to be uh, very stringent and hold the line and make sure that we're treated fairly uh, by both the federal government and other provinces when it comes to any new scheme of wealth transfer in this country. Question from Twitter. <clears throat> Why are seniors your main target in your attempt to balance the budget by cutting services and programs? Seniors are very uh, important to, to my government 
and uh, the only area that uh, uh, we're looking at uh, was well into the future in terms of the, the cost of pharmaceutical drugs. But when it comes to housing, uh, any of the other programs, uh, dental, eye care, we have some of the most comprehensive programs in the country of Canada. Our uh, daily accommodation rates are, are low compared to many other provinces, and we want to ensure that that uh, stays. Uh, but we also have to keep cognizant of the fact that we are going to see a population increase of seniors, a substantial increase. Uh, prediction is 25% by 2030. So we have to do whatever we can today to ensure that our seniors have a good quality of life as they retire. I also want to see uh, seniors retire in the very same community that they helped build uh, so that we can provide proper accommodation. If someone loses mobility, uh, or dementia and can no longer live in their own home, that we move the couple married after 60 years into a location, a housing that will reflect the need of the couple, not dividing them after many years of marriage and uh, perhaps placing one in a nursing home and, and another uh, senior spouse in a, in a lodge. Uh, that's not fair to uh, seniors. So we will be announcing a program shortly to ensure that uh, we accelerate the construction and providing uh, residences for seniors in every community in the province of Alberta.